Welcome to part two of the five part series in Ableton Live. This week, we're going to be taking a detailed look at Ableton's session view. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Distinct Mastering. My name is Freddie. I'm a mastering engineer, producer, DJ, and president of Sleeping Giant Music. For over two decades, I've helped artists grow their careers, and now I'm here to help you with your music production skills. If you'd like a free stereo master sample from me, be sure to check the link below in my description. Now let's chat about Ableton Live's session view. Hey everyone. Okay, we're back and we've got Ableton open up. I've got the session view here, which we're gonna go a bit more in depth. This is not gonna be a video to teach you how to use every function and parameter of Ableton, more about the concept of the session view. I've had some friends talked to me about Ableton recently, so I thought it'd be good to do a little series on the program. And a lot of people don't understand the concept behind session views, so that's what I wanted to get into today. So basically, when you're looking at this view, not only is it double back as your mixer down below, but you have these little boxes here, which are your clips. And the cool thing about these things is, as you can see, they're lined up in lanes. So this is lane one, lane two, lane three, and so forth. And what you can do, is for example, let's say I want to take this kick. This is a kick from a Fresco Bar song. And I want to take this kick. And as you can see, this clip, this MIDI clip, now I have the piano editor, is just functioning in a one bar length loop. So if I hit play here, it's just gonna keep looping that over and over. Now, one of the unique tricks to this view on your mixer is you can actually click and drag this up so you have a a lot bigger of a fader. I like to see it that way. And in the last video, I talk about the track delay. Um, I do like using track delay. It's a very handy tool, but it's not on by default. So another tip, if you did miss the overview video, I'll leave a link up above. You can check that out as well. So I've got my kick drum running here and I'm just gonna make a very basic, I just threw some sounds in this folder to show you. And I have, you know, you could right click and rename. Uh, color code. I have my own color coding system I like to follow. But the purpose of this video, once again, is to show you what this view can actually do. So I'm going to double click on this MIDI track and then load this basic little clap. These aren't the best sounds per se for a beat, but of this nature. But what I'm trying to do is show you guys what this view can actually do. So now notice if I hit play here, it's gonna play everything in that lane. And that's powerful because you can have these clips as long as you want. Say I want this clip to be eight bars. So now I can duplicate this across. This one is operating at one bar. This one's operating at eight bars, but it's just gonna keep going continuously. Now there's some cool things you can do with this view. Um, let's say I want this loop. I like that loop, it's cool. But you know, it might be a little too busy. So maybe what I do is if I just go here to the envelopes and I take the clip envelope, and one of the most useful ones to me is this gain. Because what I can do now is I could literally just say I want this gone. Now I just simplified it a little bit. Say I want this one gone. And all I'm doing is I'm selecting and then holding shift and dragging this down. And I just simplified it. Now I can even shorten that loop to where it's only this two bar section. Or I could even shorten it this way. And now what you've done is you've actually customized this a little bit. And so it's almost like you've chopped the loop up. You know, I don't use a lot of loops, but if I do, I try to customize them in a unique way or just take pieces of them, and that's an easy way to do it. So you could really sketch your ideas out. Uh, let's add another MIDI track here, and I could just go create, insert MIDI track, or hit Command Shift T, and I've got two now. Let's say I want this closed hat right here, and I just want, you could play this on your MIDI keyboard, or you could, you know, just draw it in like I just did, and Now I've got this closed hat running. Okay, that's cool. Um, but I wanna show you the purpose of these lanes. 
So I'm going to make this an open hat just as another example. And I'm going to drop that right in. And you could just literally just copy that clip right over because this is going to run on middle C on the piano roll. But maybe I want that to change. So if I just take these and copy these down, you could right click and say copy and then paste, which is what I did with key commands. So now you could literally say lane one. That's cool. Now I've got my open hat and I can, oh, that's, that's interesting. You know, let's add another sound here. And now we're on lane three and I've got another percussion loop going. And so, like I said, this isn't the best use of sounds. I'm just really just, I picked a bunch of random things to show you guys the concept behind this whole thing. So that is a basic overview of the session view. Next week, we're gonna get into arrangement view and I'm gonna show you how you can transfer this over to the other side. And that's a detailed look at Ableton Live session view. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment down below. If we've never worked together before and you'd like a free stereo mastered sample from me, be sure to check the link below in my description. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. Once again, my name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and have a great day.